You're watching Dreadfully Drawn live. Today, I'm going to be looking into one of my favourite goals. It is an iconic goal. It is Ronaldinho versus Chelsea in that 2004-2005 Champions League campaign. Unbelievable goal. I mean, it's a tour poke for one, and that is not something you see very often in football matches. I mean, it's a classic. Just look at the level of player that we've got on show here. Lampard. Ronaldinho, Carvalho and Dallas. The three Chelsea players surrounding Ronaldinho as he toe pokes the ball past Petr Cech. This is a Chelsea team, by the way, who were top class. This is a Chelsea team that just did not concede goals. I think they conceded 15 goals across the whole season in the Premier League. Defensively, they were so good. They, they, just in general, they were, they were so good. The, the team that they had at this point, like even the three on show here, plus Terry, Cech, Makaleli, Robin, so good. Good Johnson, so good. This is one of the great club football teams. Regardless of how they did it, regardless of what went on and how the money was spent and whatever it might be, this this was a top team and it is one of the great club football teams. Probably should have won the Champions League at this point but didn't until a few years later when they also had a really good team but this team probably should have won the Champions League. So this, this, is, this is a top Chelsea team and Ronaldinho who I'll get on to but you know, this is this is a Ronaldinho at his absolute pomp, I would say. Maybe maybe the year after, maybe the year after that. You know, this is a, this is Ronaldinho at a great point in his career. So to pull off what he did is just he's he was on another level. Let's get into Chelsea a little bit. What I love, and I don't think I don't think the Chelsea kit has ever been that shade of blue since from the top of my head. Obviously, it's the same same color blue. It's that like royal blue, but just that there's that, something distinct about this kit. And maybe the one after that they had like in 2006 that was, was it similar to Liverpool's kit or it was the Adidas kit anyway. There's just a, something about the colour blue that they used in this kit that just reeks that early Roman Abramovich era. And I really like it. And I like this, I, I really like this Chelsea kit. I mean, for one, it was made by Umbro, who were on fire at this point. I, I'm not sure if they were still with Man United at this point. They'd had a period with Man United and the kits were really nice. Chelsea, who were just starting to enter an amazing period who would eventually go on to Adidas, but this is a great Chelsea team in a great Chelsea kit. And then you had England, who had a period under Sven, which was, some, there were some really nice kits. They never really dominated the scene when it came to football boots, but for this period, these, these few years, they were up there with Nike and Adidas, I would say. Because there's probably so many more companies now making kits that sort of divided out, and it's just Adidas and Nike that have sort of took the dominance to another level, and then you've got all the others, New Balance, Castor, you know, all these other brands, they all chip in. But at this point, it, it wasn't as diluted as it is now. And Umbro were, Umbro were on fire. They were really, really good at this point. What I will say is though, is they're up against a Barcelona kit that is iconic. This is a great Barcelona kit. One of the great Barcelona away kits. Perhaps made famous by this goal. This is one of the all time iconic goals. So I think when there is an iconic goal scored, sometimes the kit gets associated with that goal. Kit gets a life of its own. Funnily enough, I actually prefer the year before or the kit before with the stripe down the middle. And Chelsea had a kit, and I think it was the away kit or the third kit to this one, where they had a nice blue stripe down the middle. So nice, like Umbro were creating some really nice kits at this point. Probably a bit of an underrated spell when it comes to football kits. But this Barcelona one, I mean, just, it's just a top kit. Is, is it gold? I don't know if you can class it as gold. More brown, beige. Perhaps it was sold as gold. I don't, I don't know if they would sell it as gold or what, but say it's more of a beigey colour. With the grey gray bits on it, but I think the stripes were blue and red. One of the great things about this era of Barcelona kits and the Barcelona kits before it was just the lack of sponsor. Having no sponsors on the kits. Like, obviously, I know the reasons for having sponsors on your kits, and you've probably got to, but, like, there is just something about football kits that don't have sponsors on. It adds to the the greatness of them. Ronaldinho is a player that I, obviously he's regarded as one of the all-time greats, but I, I, I think he's so underappreciated, especially in this period. Like, I don't think he quite had the longevity that other players of his era had, but for that, like, five year where he broke out, and then obviously I know he went to AC Milan and PSG and stuff, but that, that period of time at Barcelona, he, he was special and he, he was everywhere. Like, people would probably say that Neymar's a better player because of his longevity and maybe, you know, maybe his output's been better across a longer period of time, but Neymar's not on the same level as Ronaldinho. Like, Ronaldinho was an icon, and I don't quite think Neymar's become that. Maybe it's the way Ronaldinho looked. Maybe it's just his 
attitude to football. Maybe it's the, the fact he always seemed like he loved the game. But his unique style, his ability on the ball, his tricks, his skills, his fashion. Like, you could not watch anything that was football related without some sort of reference to Ronaldinho. FIFA games, adverts, Nike adverts. He was on t-shirts. Like, you just couldn't escape him and rightly so. Like, he was, he was so iconic. I think it's just become a bit of a lost thing that... He was the guy. Those Nike adverts at the time, just sit, it's cinema. One thing that is a bit underrated about this era of football, and and you can see in the photo, is that the, is that the, the advertising boards in the back aren't digital. So you always get the nice branding in the background of things. So like on one photo, it's sharp, then the away for one. Ford, Ford had their moment. You do not see as many Ford adverts now, but Ford had their moment. I. I I keep thinking of the Steven Gerrard goal against Olympiacos. There's a, Ford, there's a Ford one in the background of his goal. The Champions League night, under the lights with a Ford advertisement aboard. Top class. Top, top class. I actually think, and I might be wrong. No, he's not. I thought he had um, Adidas Mania boots on, but Lampard's got the next brand of Adidas boots on. The silver ones, which were so smart. I prefer the Mania to this version. The one after but Ronaldinho's got his tempo boots on or tempo he is the player for those boots they, they weren't they weren't as like popular as, as vapors and, and predators and total 90s and stuff like that but he was made for that boot that boot was made for him yeah I mean I don't know whether people really do appreciate him for, as much as they probably should he was he was top class and this Chelsea team was top class and he and he just tore poked the ball in the bottom corner like it was nothing like it was absolutely nothing. Like it's just a game of fun for him. Like it, the game's easy. The game's so easy. I'm just going to toe poke this ball at the bottom corner past the, one of the best keepers in the world at this point. What are you going to do about it? The ironic thing is, is that Chelsea actually won the game and won the won the tie. Eventually, get knocked out in the semi final by Liverpool. One of my all time favorite photos. One of my all time favorite goals. Ronaldinho versus Chelsea, 8th of March 2005. Feel free to subscribe and like this video. Thank you for watching. As always. Goodbye.